Hello and thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, today we're going to learn how to connect from our Windows machine to our Linux environment where we most of the time run our EDA tools. So we normally install the EDA tools in our server, Linux server, and then we want to connect from our Windows host. So the easiest way and the cheapest way is to use Sigwin. Sigwin is basically a collection of open source Linux tools which work under, under Windows. So the first thing we have to go is to sigwin.com and download the package. We have to be careful depending on our, if our machine is 64 bits or 32 bits, uh, download the correct package. So as we see on the screen, go sigwin.com and in our case we're running Windows 8 and most of the newer machines are 64 bits so we download the installation package for Sigwin and we download that and then we execute that and you will see that it runs a setup program. We, we run the installer and we will see the different uh, mirror servers where we can actually download the package. And then we have to select the package that we want to install because we want to connect remotely to the Linux environment, we have to download the X Windows environment. If you want to do development in SigWin, there's also development tools for G++, GCC, GDB, debuggers, mm -hmm. DDD, and so on. Uh, but in this case, we want to only be able to con run the Linux machine, connect to the Linux machine and run and look at the graphical environment from our Windows machine. So we click on the X11 options, we select all the different packages to install on our Linux uh, Sigwin environment on Windows. So we select that, we click on Next, and now we'll basically start downloading and installing all the different packages in order to run, to graphically view those uh, applications running on a Linux machine on our Windows host. So we install all that, we can see it has downloaded all the binaries and now we want to actually create a shortcut for start bin win to start the X Windows server. We can create a shortcut on our desktop to execute anytime we want to actually connect and, and to our Linux machine. So we create a shortcut to in our bin folder or Sigwin, where Sigwin was installed, startwin.exe and we moved it to our desktop. So this might take some time, so I've uh, fast forwarded a little bit. So we can see this is a shortcut to starting the X Windows server for, to uh, have access to the gra gra graphical user interface in Linux. And if you go to the, if you double click on that icon, you can see on the right hand click it created this X icon. So we can go to application, you click on X term and it will open a terminal window. Now we are not connected now still to Linux. Now we have to SSH or Telnet or FTP our Linux machine. This is the easiest way normally is the SSH. And you would have to have an account already in the Linux environment. So you have to talk to the system administrator to create an account for you. So in this case, I'm going to connect to my account by typing XSS, SSH, your login name, add, and the tool name. Now in order to to re be able to redirect the graphical user interface from Linux to your machine, uh, forwarding has to be enabled by the system administrator and you have to type first xhost plus. It's not the safest way but it's the easiest way to do that. So once we're connected to the Linux machine as shown on the, on the display, the first thing we have to do is set up the paths to all the EDA tools that we might have in the bash, bash RC file. So with that we use a an, um, command line editor like VI, VI and we look at bash rc in our home directory and we have to set up all the paths and the license files, license servers to run our EDA tools as shown on the screen. Once the paths have been set, and if you do any changes, you need to source the bash, bash rc file. So in this case, we have not done any, any changes, but still we source it to make sure, make sure that all the effects of the changes that we have done are, are, um, are, uh, have been updated. And now we can run our EDA tools. In this case, I'm typing isc I want to run the Xilinx tools, so I just type ISC from the command, and as you see, we, I'm displaying now ISC on my Windows machine, Windows host, while it is being run on the Linux server we have just connected to. So you see Linux is our Linux machine, and you can have as many X terminal, terminal windows as you want, so you can run many applications, or you can uh, run, execute as many applications as you want. So now you see we are running ISC on our Linux machine, but it's displaying ISC on our Windows server. So this is a very convenient way to actually work uh, using expensive, especially EDA tools and uh, computation-intensive uh, tools. Now what you can also do is connect to another 
Linux machine. If you have a network of Linux servers, some are more powerful than others, and you can SSH-X to redirect the screen to your to your, to, uh, to your host, and again, your login name, add, and the tool name, and now we're connecting to a different machine. This is a little bit more powerful machine, and now again, we can type in ISC. We may have to make sure that the paths are also set in the bash RC file there, and now we again execute an ISC. You can see it's uh, starting faster because this is a faster machine. So this is one of the advantages of Linux. You can log in remotely to different machines extremely quickly, and you can set up, start a job there, and you can continue doing your things on Windows. Uh, while it is running in the Windows server. Now, how to actually transfer data from Linux to Windows, to the Windows environment? One of the easiest things is to just to download a free FTP uh, tool. Uh, in this case, uh, we can use WinSCP as a free FTP um, program. So if you download this tool, for example, this is one of the th ones you can use. You can use Zilla, you can use some other tools. There's a lot of free tools out there. So you can download this. If you download this WinSCP and you execute it, you can see that icon there on the desktop, you execute it and then you have to do the same thing. Type in the machine, the login, the password, same as we've done from the command line. Again, here is asking us for our password. And now we're going to connect to the Linux machine. So on the right hand left pane you see our Windows machine. On the right pane you see the Linux machine where we just connected. So then you can just easily drag and drop files from Linux to Windows. So this is basically the easiest way that I have found to actually uh, to move files within uh, from our Linux host to our, uh, our from our Linux server to our Windows host. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions please drop me a line. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks.